Hello, my name is Owen, and today I'll be walking through my book, Pet Peeves. Now, to clarify, this is not about plot conventions. It's not about authors, writing styles. It's not even about non-physical books. It's specifically the issues that I run into whilst reading physical books. And, and most of these are obvious, guys. Most of these, you guys should be agreeing with me, if I'm being honest. There might be one where, you, where I get some little bit of pushback, but I, 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 I'll, I'll present you with this. Have you ever thought about the fact that maybe you're wrong? Not saying you're an idiot. Maybe you aren't. But maybe you're wrong. But we'll get there when we get there, guys. Because I recently started Ship of Magic by Robin Hobb. And Robin, I'm going to pick on you a lot. Uh, but just know it's not actually about you. It's about the publisher. It's about the bookstores. The content of these words not talking about them. So far, I'm actually quite enjoying it. And I love you as an author. But this book just reminded me of a lot of things that really irk me to my core. Uh, so I want to go over them. And like I said, a lot of them are obvious. Like for example, there's things that we all know are stupid, right? When the spines of books in a series are different book to book, right? Because then it messes up your bookshelf flow. Everybody hates that. It's like, I don't understand what publishers are thinking when they make these design decisions. Because it's like, if you're not thinking about how they look together, what is your job, I guess? What is your job? Does it really help your, your marketing quota if you uh, put the author's name at the bottom and then the title at the top on book two of a series? And then you realize that it was a bad mistake, so you turn it back for, for book three. And then you just do a blank a blank, blank spine for book four because you, know, you just like to mix it up. How many interns have lost their jobs because of, because of stuff like that? And yet it keeps happening, guys. It's an epidemic. Epidemic. Is that what I said? Now, listen, another thing too. A well-known issue when books are different sizes. Uh, and it, I, I feel like my hunch is this is not always a publishing problem because I find it very hard to believe that these publishing companies think that making books different sizes book to book is a good idea. I really think it's a bookstore problem and a big bookstore problem because listen, I love an independent bookstore. I love a local bookstore. And when I walk into a local bookstore, I, I, I reduce my expectations of what I'm gonna find to zero, right? I'm not looking for a specific author, no matter how popular the author is. I'm not looking for a series. The audacity to think you could walk into a local bookstore and find an entire series, depending on what kind of bookstore it is, obviously. If it's, if it's, really, if it's really eclectic, you're not finding two books of the same series, I'm sorry. And if you do, they sure, they are within 30 years of publication date. And that's just part of the joy, right? It's more like thrift vibes. You know what I mean? You get what you can get and you're happy with it because it makes the experience all the more better that you can't get what you want. You know what I mean? But I walk into a Barnes and Noble. I walk into my computer on Amazon and I can't get consistency. I, I just ask myself in that, in those scenarios, what exactly are you offering? if not consistency, right? Because I don't go to Amazon for the coolest looking book, for the most vintage book. I'm going, because you could sell me the mass market editions for a low, low price. And you could give it to me in a day and a half. So when you can't do that, I just ask, maybe it's time to step down. Maybe it's time to dissolve yourself. That's all I'm saying. Just step out of the book industry. You've caused enough ruckus with your, with your audible drama, perhaps it's time to take a step back, acknowledge your roots and say, people are doing it better than us or they could do it better if we just got out of Dodge. Something to consider maybe, something to consider. Moving on from that though, like I said, those are the obvious ones. Another, I think one that's fairly obvious but, but less talked about from what I've seen is a newer trend among published books where the front cover, and I don't have an example to show you on Fortunately, I don't have an example to show you, but I've seen it a number of times where the front cover is shorter than the rest of the book as like a design choice. Let's keep that one in the draft books, ladies and gentlemen. I think it looks hideous and it's annoying to, to, to touch and to hold and to own because it just means you got a little bit of like a 
dinky page that's like this big. It's like, oh, hey, oh, it shows me the page before. So then your real first page is getting like more wear and tear because there's no front page of covering it. So you just got like a like a fourth of a page that's just exposed to the elements. And oh, it's a different color, so it looks cool. Unless you make the second page laminated like a cover, so it's just cool. You you're overcomplicating. Just make a cover. That's a le you know what I mean? I just don't understand these design choices because especially, in, and these are always in super popular books that are selling a lot of copies too, and they're paperbacks. They're not fancy hard covers that are trying to be artistic with it. It's just like, keep it simple, stupid. Don't put Tom Cruise's face on a book cover. Make them all the same size if they're a series and, and just make them look like a normal book. We're not trying to make sliced bread too over here, are we? We're not trying to, what's the phrase? We're not trying to reinvent the wheel here. You know what I mean? Cause it's just when the thing, when things call me a curmudgeon, but when things change, I get enraged. That's all, that's all. Now, diving into the issues of this book, starting with my least controversial to my most controversial. When I when I was first greeted with this book, I was very excited to read it. I noticed that uh, this book has horrible margins uh, in the end cover. It, it, if you could see here, and this isn't uh, the worst defending page, but I know this is going to be an issue from the first page. How close the the inner margin is from the words to like the crack. And there's some pages on here where I have to peel the book open to simply read the ends of sentences. And again, you're probably thinking, Owen, you gotta stop buying mass market paperback editions if you don't want crappy quality. Well, you know what? Maybe the mass market should be the easiest to read, perhaps. You could put a stick man on the cover, spend no money on the design, the prettiness of it, just put words on a page, sell it to me for five bucks. As long as I could read it, that's what I bought it for, right? It's just like, maybe, and maybe I got a bad copy. Maybe the whole trilogy that I bought won't be like this, but I think it will be. And I'm too scared to look. Maybe books have to be read. Maybe think of that next time the factory line starts pumping out its thousands of pages. Just think about that. Another thing is too, and this isn't a publisher, this isn't a book bookstore issue, although this time I can blame it on Barnes and Noble. And here's a story. The most traumatic day of my life was when I was like nine or 10. I was reading a book. Uh, I stepped out of the car uh, holding my book and I dropped it. And I dropped it into a rain puddle. It got soaked, right? And I was halfway through this book. The front cover, because it was utterly drenched, it turned to sludge. It turned to a nasty pile of wet paper sludge destroyed. And the pages did that thing where like something that's wet and then becomes dry, like the paper comes like crack, crackly. You know what I mean? Like it's like poppable. You know what I'm talking about? Where it becomes like, it's like bubbly. Not when it's wet, but after it becomes dry again. And that so traumatized me that, that the slightest crease of a book fills me with an unending rage. And it's one of the things that bother me most I'm really the most anal about that than anything. It's just like how people treat me. Like I, I, am I lending a book up? I'm like, please don't crease the pages. And then when I put my book in my backpack or like in my bag and I accidentally put it face down and like I pull it out and like the cover is like folded over, I'm like, no. And, and I swear those are the moments I'm like, if only I could turn back time. Not when I actually make a real life mistake or, or, or anything happens to me of actual consequence. But when I see a creased book, I just think if only I could turn back time to prevent myself from doing that because just, it just fills me with a rage. It's, it's like my most prized possessions are just these paperback books that are mass market and I, and I crease the covers and it just really upsets me. This one, I had no choice at Barnes & Noble but to buy one that was already creased. I saw it immediately because I why would I buy a crease book? Never would make that mistake. I had to do it because it was the only copy of the mass market they had for the first book in the series. They had plenty of book two and plenty of book three, but they only had one. Could I have asked if they had more in the back? Possibly. I didn't want to be a nuisance. Could I have ordered on Amazon? Yes, but I was already at Barnes & Noble and I like being in Barnes & Noble. So I bit the bullet and I bought it. And so there's like a crease there, there's like a scuff there and it bothers me, but at least I knew going in, like this is what I was getting myself into. But it bothers me, it bothers me. 
This is the one that's a little bit controversial, guys. And this is related to fantasy books in particular. Maps. A lot of fantasy books start with a map. Now listen, hear me out, hear me out. Personally, I could do without them. I don't think they add that much value, right? And But listen, hear me out. I understand why people love having maps and fantasy books. Because I would be lying if I haven't read a fantasy book where I'm like, especially if it's like a, um, I'm like, oh, like, oh, they're talking about this town. I say it's next to this town. But I'm like, there was a map. I remember. Let me just check it. Or oh, there's like a battle map. I'm like, oh, like, this is the battle lines. Let me look. They're talking about this, the strategy. So let me refer to the map. In those instances, I have used the maps. So I understand why people love them. However, my pet peeve is the fact that they always put the maps in the front. And I know what you're thinking. You're making this up. This isn't an issue, but it is. But it is. When I, I'm, I love Farseer Trilogy. I was so excited to read this book. I'm loving it so far. I'm, I'm really enjoying every step of the way. And I'm, I just started it. It's a great book. Greeted, first thing with Ship of Magic. Ooh, <laughs> Welcome to fantasy. Can't wait to be back. Can't wait to experience a new setting with new characters. I wonder what magic I will experience in Bingtown. A map of Bingtown? And look at this map. Not to fault Hob again, because you're not I'm sure you're not the map illustrator. That is simply a squiggly line. On a, on a white background with the shaded part equals the water, and it's called Bingtown. Nothing whisks me away in a world of, of, of magic and mischief like Bingtown. What am I supposed to do with this information? It's the second thing I'm greeted with other than the title. Bingtown. Looks, looks intriguing, right? There's not even houses on this. It's not even like Greg lives here and I could be, oh, well, who's Greg? Can't wait to meet Greg. There's just, it's just a map. And there's like little like, oh, it's the entrance point to like the, and there's the bluffs and, and Bingtown. And it turns out the white part, I just found out now the white part's the water. So it's not even labeled. So I don't even know what the hell I'm looking at. And I'm supposed to be immersed in the world of Bingtown from this? This could be any shape. And it means exactly the same amount of information. It's not, and it's not just this, the map. There's three maps greeting me before I get to start this book. Before I know a single character, before I know what kind of world we're living in. This could be a book about a sailing in space and dodging asteroids. The ship of magic, right? And you're greeting me with a line and calling it Bingtown. And I'm supposed to give a hoot? Because, listen, I understand maybe some people like to have a map, right? Because they go to love Bing. Maybe I'm going to grow to love Bingtown. Maybe Bingtown would be my favorite town of all fantasy realms, right? By Rivendell, I'm, I'm moving to Bingtown. Maybe. But, but, but the gall, the ego, the, the hubris, to put it as the second thing I see other than the title, as if I'm going to be delving into this fantasy realm and saying, oh, by George, a map. Welcome to Bingtown. Yippee. It's so useless, guys. What you should do, if you insist, if you insist upon putting a map in a fantasy book, which I don't know why people do, it's just like a status thing at this point, because really nine times out of 10, it'll mean nothing. Every once in a while, they'll put an important battle map in there that, that's like, oh, the, the geography actually plays a part in the story. Nine times out of ten, that's not the case. If you're going to insist upon it, just to mark yourself as a status of a fantasy writer, well, i got to have a map, so let me just draw a crudely drawn circle and call it Flarp Town. Put it at the end of the book. Take a, take a note out of nonfiction books, and if a map's important, you put it in the page where it's important, first of all, the chapter that's important, or put it at the end in an appendix. Where other fantasy books like do like word descriptions, right? Am I am I out of my mind? Have I lost it? Is it too hard to put a table of contents that says like if you're interested in a map of Bingtown, check Appendix C at the end of the book. 
That way, if I'm reading, it's like, oh, like they're talking about Bingtown. I wish I knew what it looked like. Oh, wait, I remember from the table of context. Let me look in the back. But instead, people who do not give a crap about a squiggly drawn line of Bingtown have to be greeted with it. And, and I was saying, oh, and it's just two pages. Just, just, just flip past it. That's why it's a pet peeve, guys. Because it's not, it's not world ending. But I just think it makes very, very little sense. And I think that maps as a uh, genre cliche, overused. Overused, guys. And that's really the impetus of it, right? Because if they were, if they were always valuable, always provided something to the book other than just being there, you put them at the front, you know what, I'll deal with it every three out of 20 books. But instead, it's every single fantasy book. And almost all of them are completely useless. And I, I, I simply won't retain the information, especially before I even know who lives there. That's my opinion anyway. Those are my pet peeves. Let me know your uh, physical book pet peeves. What bothers you guys? And, 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 and I guess I said I wasn't talking about like plot cliches and I talked about like, like a genre cliche of having maps. I just think it's a little silly is all, guys. It's just a little silly. But let me know if you agree. Let me know if you disagree. Because I know a lot of people love their maps. And just explain to me. Explain to me, number one, why? And number two, do they need to be in the front? Do they, do they really? Because I feel like my annoyance factor should like be prioritized over you liking it. Just because it's like, it's me. You know what I mean? Like it's me versus like it's you. You know what I mean? Like I'm the one, like when I think the, the voice is in my head, not yours. So like, shouldn't I be prioritized? Like, am I insane? <laughs> be sure to like and subscribe if you like the video. Um, and you want to see more of it in the future. Thanks for sticking around, guys. All in good fun, of course.